All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay, there were a few things we were talking about uh, last week. We should continue them. Um, but to begin with, uh, I want to give a quick update on the cap, um, and then and then let's talk about uh, the sample driver that uh, Nicholas has been implementing, uh, and then we'll get into the discussion we were having last week. So, to start off with uh, um, about the cap, let me uh, let me share my screen. So. I've started making changes to the cap uh, to make it really, really simple. Um, uh, I've, I've just simplified down everything that was here um, in, in terms of the introductory paragraphs, motivations, user stories, and goals, and everything. Uh, and when we get to the APIs, I, I just simply uh, just paste the Go structure like Tim asked. I think if you have enough comments here, it clearly uh, denotes what it's supposed to do. Um, uh, same thing with the rest of the APIs. I haven't pasted the access APIs yet, but it's just a matter of copy pasting. Um, and then getting into uh, things like application pods uh, and downward APIs. I think uh, downward API is what we'll be discussing today. We're still figuring that out. Um, Did you make any progress on that on Monday? Yeah, we talked about Azure. Um, if either uh, Guy or... Uh, uh, Viani, yeah, the two of them, uh, we're going to um, come back with a proposal for uh, what Azure should look like. Um, yeah, we'll get, we'll yes. get to that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, so that's where we are. I think one thing we can do to make this easier for anyone who's reading this is to just have uh, a bunch of diagrams, just a bunch of block diagrams that just simply say um, what's the order of operations, like what does the user do and... Where does it go from? Uh, how, how does it go from a request to an actual bucket being present in the pod, um, or provided to the pod? So that's the that's all I've got on the cap. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Okay, uh, let's get to uh, the sample driver. Um, there's a PR for the sample driver, uh, and and I believe. Uh, there are some uh, comments on it. Uh, I feel like uh, it's been it's been sitting there for a while, so I just want to figure 14 days now. So I just want to figure out what's needed to move this along. Um, so uh, so Nicholas, I, I, the, Chris has left some comments on this. Uh, uh, like uh, do, what w like what's going on? I'm trying to understand why it's taking so long. Um, well, I, I reply to some of the, those comments, and and also um, some of them like related to CI, etc. Uh, let's please use uh, when, when reviewing PR, etc. Look at does this make an improvement? It's not necessarily perfect, as in I know this, for example, does not include pro integration, um, but. I don't think it requires, mean, I'm not even familiar with Pro myself, so so integrating it with it could be quite difficult. Um, I thought we already have that. I think we already have that in other It's a Krish, no, is the one who worked on that. It's already uh, in other uh, cozy repos already have those, I think. And this one doesn't. Oh, uh, oh yeah, this one is new, it's brand new. Yes. Uh, if you can, maybe you can take a look of other cozy repos and see what is yeah, it. My, my, my point is, here is something which moves the needle forward, I believe at least. It's not perfect. There's other things that will need to be done, but not necessarily within the scope of this PR. Let, let, let's not make this grow and grow and grow until let's say humongously, it's already very, very big. Um, and, and we can remove things and add things in, in, in follow-ups, but... I feel like, okay, oh. so let's go into the comments. Uh, I, I, like, I don't know if he's asking you to... Uh, I looked at them earlier. Does it really say that we should... I don't think he's asking for more scope, right? Like, uh, w w uh, Krish, w like, uh, I'm trying to understand. So are these asking for changes or are we adding more features? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. I think I was using the wrong mic, so I was, I was talking. <laughs> I wasn't going through. 
Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say to add the prow stuff in this PR. I would just say to remove the GitHub CI stuff, right? That's basically like dead code right now because we can't use GitHub uh, GitHub CI with the current setup. Um, yeah, we can always add the prow stuff in a in a later PR. I, I agree with you on that. And remove this one at the same point. I, I just don't think it makes sense to have this one right now. That's my perspective. I, what, what do other folks think? So is uh, GitHub CI, does it, it doesn't work with uh, Kubernetes uh, repos, right? Because it uses Pro. I don't right. believe so. Maybe Shing, you can weigh in. I don't know of any projects that use yeah, GitHub. Yeah. GitHub actually, actually there's one project that uses that. There's a, a Windows uh, project actually uses that one. But uh, if you look at all the other Kubernetes CSI that use Pro, so we should use that. Okay. Uh, I thought, uh, uh, is that Srini actually who yeah. did some initial work? Um, but I kind yeah. of lost the track. Uh, you know, I was just thinking like this should follow this other cozy repos doing the same thing instead of uh, yeah, creating a different set of uh, CI. Yep, so. agreed. So, so I'm, I'll add a commit which removes this stuff. Okay, fine. Yeah, just remove the CI stuff. Um, yeah, and I think if there However, are any minor comments, uh, take care of those two. But yeah, don't, we don't have to add, like you said, let's, let's move forward with something uh, um, that works, move the needle forward. But if it's a simple comment, I think uh, I think you can quickly take care of that. Like it seems to be something about uh, um, you know driver name and yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I mean, have the conversation. The, Sorry, go ahead. The, like the driver name is uh -huh. something to be discussed because yeah. there's different stances. Mm -hmm. Neither of them is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So what do we do about it? Yeah, let's go into them now. I was uh, looking for other comments, but uh, here's the driver name. Uh, I guess I could explain my rationale for wanting the change there. Mm -hmm. So like the um, CSI host path sample, like driver, right? Um, that one's under the CSI like group, right? CSI.kids.io. Um, so I proposed that um, mm. the sample driver should be under the object storage.kids.io. Uh, IO group that we've been using for the other projects, mm -hmm. right? So that that's basically the change here. Yeah, that makes sense. To me, that's a bit weird, to be honest. Yeah, you know, all that matters is that it's unique and, it's... and unambiguous. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh. But shouldn't we shouldn't we be just you know symmetric with CSI? I I, I don't mind as long as it works, it's okay. But I mean, isn't that how we have always been doing things? Shouldn't we? I know it's a terrible argument to say that's how we've always been doing things, but this is a main <laughs> kind of problem. But for, for, for Alpha, it, it really doesn't matter. It, it, this only yeah. You, you only get into trouble here if you people are using it in production and then you change it. That but, creates huge problems. But this is, this is a sample right. driver, so I mean, yeah. no one should yeah. be using production. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm not particularly attached to this this suggestion. It was just something that I that I noticed that uh, I think you know makes, we could we could align. Yeah, I think it makes sense to just like like is there is there a bigger issue with changing it to something like you know sample dot sample driver dot object storage or is, is there a problem with that? Like, is that going to affect any other part of the code? No, it, it'll only affect someone who's upgrading from the old driver to the new driver. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and should be nobody, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. All right. I'll leave it up to you, Nicholas. Uh, may, you, you, I'll leave the decision up to you. I, th I think it makes sense. What I, I think it's okay. Um, I'll keep this as simple as. Yeah, why don't we use Cobra? Cobra is what we've been using everywhere else, and like pretty much all of Kubernetes is Cobra. It's just yes, another thing for people to learn. Again, I don't know. Uh, uh, there's no right answer here either, but uh, to move this along, what do you think, Nicholas? Well, uh, this thing doesn't need Cobra. I, all it needs is one flag. And again, it's not because all of Co a cozy driver is not necessarily written by someone who has in-depth knowledge with Kubernetes uh, or, cozy, or other cozy projects as source code. 
so so if this is going to serve as the example for uh, others to write drivers shouldn't we use a framework that's more flexible if they're going to just copy paste the code wouldn't cobra make it easier for them to add more flags as needed instead of having to you know they probably start with this flag framework now well that's the standard might... goal flag. i mean it's not even it's not a framework as a standard flag library yeah, I think we should be consistent with what uh, other six large projects has been doing. Mm -hmm. So it'll be easier. Maybe, maybe we can just uh, make this comment, like um, convert this comment to an issue, and then merge it this way. That can be done. Yeah, sure. Yep. All right. Um, okay. What is what is going on here? Oh, the name. Okay. And uh, okay, so so Nicholas, please add the issue for this and the other one to Cobra. Well, the the issue for that should be created once we have CI. the The problem is that well, problem the original code which gets which is in this PR worked when it was written. In the meantime this uh, one field has been removed in uh, the, the API, I believe, but others may have been removed as well, etc. So, so as long as we don't have CI, as long as we don't are not running the tests, then there can be other breakage. You see what I mean? Not really. Um, can you repeat that, please? So if you go back to that comment, I put that line in there because at the time the code was written, that line had to be there. But all of this is developed against the, the canary versions or, or the, the, the main branch. So you want of the, the cozy API repository and the cozy controller and, and whatnot. So from my point of view, we, should not, we shouldn't even create an issue right now to remove bar namespace, but when actual CI is in place and this thing gets tested again because it was tested in, 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 my, in the source repository, but it's not yet tested in the target repository, then tests may fail, tests will likely fail, and they would need to be fixed. But as long as we don't run tests, then there is, I mean, Krish now noticed that bar namespace is no longer required. Okay, fine. But there may be other fields that need to be removed as well or added, God knows, because we're not running the tests. That makes no sense to maybe, me. Yes, maybe the issue should be to just uh, integrate with Prow, right? That that's the issue, right? I, exactly. But I, yeah, I, makes sense. There are some simple things we should we should just get rid of. I mean, it's pre pretty straightforward. Why 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 are we doing it this way? I don't understand. Because it seems like a kind of a roundabout way to do this. Yeah, but I think it's adding too much complexity to something very simple. We don't use this. Just get rid of it. Like, why have dead code? That that part I don't get. I I, I agree. When prow comes in place, eventually, this will make no sense. But until then, anyone looking at this will think that that matters. Yes, but we don't know whether there's other stuff that doesn't make sense. Sorry. Anymore. So, sorry. Can you repeat that? He's because saying that. Uh, yeah. Sorry, go, because go ahead. Fact, no because of the fact no tests are being executed right now, this whole thing could be broken. The fact that bar namespace is there may be one cause of breakage. If you now say we have to remove it because people may look at this and hence believe that this thing works, well, we can't assert that because even if we remove this, there may be other things they see that doesn't work. The what that tells me is we should get problem first, then get this in. Uh, I don't. <laughs> well, <Isn't that> what, <laughs> come on. No, but but I mean it, the, the fact that so not testing is bad enough, but you know ignoring things you know are bad is you know, what, why why yeah, go yeah, there. I think visual inspection is a pretty good approximation of of knowing if it's right or wrong. And you're right, it's not a hundred percent like testing would be, but if we if we can visually determine that something is incorrect, we would fix it and then. You're, there's a small chance for missing something that the test would turn up, but it's not an argument not to fix the things that we know are wrong. 
-hmm. that's let, that's letting the perfect be the enemy of the good right <clears throat> Yeah, so Nicholas, please, please take that out. I think it's pretty straightforward. This is like a no-brainer. Um, but 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 the the yes. request to get the tests up and running is, is still a very important one. Absolutely, <laughs> it's just unrelated. Yep. <laughs> All right, I think this looks pretty straightforward. Just make the tiny changes and. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Krish, uh, please re-review once that's done and. Yep. And yeah. the last thing is just a rebase. I think there's quite a few commits. Okay, just like make it just one. a squash. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please, please uh, work together and uh, you know help move this forward. All right, that's it. That's it on this. I don't want to spend any more time. We've already spent a lot of time on this. Uh, let's get into let's get into uh, the next thing, which is uh, uh, which is which is the uh, API, f the downward API. So as of last week, we discussed uh, how the download API should look for S3, and then we got into how it should look for Azure. And uh, it, so we call the API bucket access info, um, and this is what the structure is gonna look like. It's gonna have uh, three different uh, fields in it, one for S3, one for Azure, one for GCS. And we want just this thing um, to have everything required uh, for, for a pod to access the uh, uh, bucket. So we're talking about Azure and uh, uh, Vianney and Guy, uh, we're going to go figure out uh, what this structure should look like. So I'll give it up to you, Guy and Vianney. Well, so so th is this is meant to be a Go, of Go code? Yeah. It, it kind okay, of I mean, I, the, the way I would have imagined it is that like S3 bucket access info would be a type outside of the bucket access info type struct. And then there would be a field in bucket access info called right. S3 info oh. of the type S3 bucket yep, access yep. info that would usually be null unless, um, or I mean, there would be a bunch of fields and only one of them would be non-null. That would be the, the assumption. I think that right. was the intention, right? Uh, yes, that's yeah. how it is in the PR as well. Okay. This is just like a representation of it. Okay, okay. This is raw. Hmm. How do I edit this? So, so we have an endpoint, a bucket name, a region. Top right, it says edit. Credentials. So, so credentials. Why wouldn't we just spell that out as explicitly access key and secret key? Um. To allow for. Uh different credential types. Well, the, the, but this is, okay. So my my assumption had been that like, we would only allow the one type. And and I thought when we talked about it last week, we, we had some agreement on the, you know, we don't want to get too fancy here. That um, we, want to, we want to force people to do the, 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 the universal thing. Um, but but if, I want to hear the argument for something other than the universal thing. <laughs> It's just it's just uh, friendly to uh, how we do things. What we'll need in the future, instead of having them be you know fields here, we could we could always expand on this. I don't know if that even. Oh oh, I see what you're saying. It's a it's a type that contains the two fields, so it's just an encapsulation thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. As long as it's as long as it's clear in the in the because this is an API contract, so as long as it's clear that they're definitely going to be non-null and there's definitely not going to be anything else, mm -hmm. then. Then, then you're fine. And then you're, you're right. Over time, you could, in principle, evolve it with new fields mm -hmm. if we came up with a design that allowed that. Mm -hmm. um, so the well, I want to skip over certificates because that's the hard one. Um, <clears throat> signature version, did we convince ourselves that this is absolutely necessary and useful? I mean, we, we want everyone to use uh, S3v4, but there <clears throat> are some object storage providers that work with S3v2. Um, OK. So, so, so the the idea is, well, okay, are the ones that do S three V two unable to do S three V four? Do they just do both? Yeah, usually, usually the ones that do V two is because they uh, don't do it. Uh, either the server is is instructing them to use V two, right? The driver is is asking for V two, or um, well, okay, um, yeah, 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 usually yeah. The, the client is not. 
but we, we have to specify what the negotiation looks like, right? Because you don't want to, you don't want to have someone get something other than what they wanted. Yeah, you can do um, that in the bucket class. Right, but I'm saying like, like by default, we should have a sensible default. I guess that's just where I'm going with this is that like, if I, if I don't say, I, if I don't ask for a specific version, is it possible that I'll get something other than V4? Because if so, then that sort of suggests I must always put V4 in my bucket classes if if my client refuses to speak V2, right? <clears throat> so V4 is the current one, right? But so right yeah. now, if you if you don't yeah, specify, I, I, I would also agree it will be V4. But what happens when V5 comes along? What does it then well, yeah, mean? Right, we, we need to talk right. about the, the today and, and the tomorrow. So I, I'm saying like today, if they don't specify it, is the server free to give me an S3 V2 only bucket if that's what it has available to it? Or or would, would it be like S3 V2 be an opt-in thing where I could only get it if I explicitly asked for it and and it, you'd be surprised to get anything other than the default? Um, because I'm just, I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, like, yeah, we should support S3 V2 for those who really want it, but we should, but like, we don't want anyone to fall into that, into that trap by accident, right? You, you would you really want to say, I, I want S3 V2, um, or, or at least, at least assert that I am willing to accept S3 V2 if that's the best you've got, um, so that the server can, you know, look at its potential places that it might put the bucket and and pick pick one that has because because the goal of, of the end user is like i know what my workload can and can't do and i i want to request buckets that will work with my workload and so maybe i happen to know that i'm running in a private cloud that only has s3 v2 support and therefore i've set up my my workloads to be compatible with s3 v2 and, and i you know make the right the right storage or bucket class parameters and and then i get it but like the guy who doesn't do that and just wants to adhere to the standard of v4 should be able to say that's what i want um so 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 maybe the answer is you just always put s3 v4 in your bucket class and then you're guaranteed to always get it here but but then then the, the next question is imagine a future where there is an s3 v5 like okay so presumably what will happen is all the implementations will continue supporting v4 while people gradually migrate to v5 and so in that transitional period, you can keep asking for V4 and keep obtaining it, even though the server could have given you V5. And then as- as What, as, what do you as, mean asking for it? By the bucket access class, for yeah, example, yeah. I would keep on- the, the bucket class, or maybe it's the access class. I mean, that's that's another, so so yeah, we have to figure out which of these parameters that are, that are gonna be represented in the downward API come from either the bucket or the bucket access. And therefore, are they defined in the bucket class or the bucket access class? That those are that's a separate decision we have to make. But I'm just I'm trying to figure out. So, so if 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 we're in the sort of the status quo where you have S3 v4 is the best that there is, and so you define all of your apps to require S3 v4, but then tomorrow they require it. How do they require it? They require it by by specific by the 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 cluster specifying in a bucket in a class, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you, how you. you you use a class that has that specified, meaning that right. that that the it would be a violation to give you anything other than S three v four. You would just expect an error if S three v four is, is unavailable. Right. Um, so so at that point, so then you need to update your class, right? That's that's the change that you're well, talking yeah, so, about so, so, here, right? Well, in the future, when there is an S three v five, yeah, then the question becomes, how do I say as a workload? You know what? My workload is S3 v5 compatible, and so I would be willing to accept an S3 v5 access if you've got it. But I know that the vast majority of implementations can't, and they're going to give me S3 v4. So, like, how would I say as a workload, I, I either or? Yeah, there. So that's a B B A R, right? That's where the request comes into play if the workload needs to specify, rather than the the. No, admin. no. I mean, it, it's okay if the B A C has it. It's just. Like the, the, no, but then it's not the workload. It doesn't come with a workload. I mean, if if what you're aiming for here is is uh, the handshake from the workload side, right? Saying what do I support? 
Right, right, but the remember the workload can can enumerate the bucket access classes and see, okay, this bucket access class is S3v4 only, this other bucket access class is S3v5 only, and maybe this third bucket access class is is an either or, and then I can choose based on it. Um, you're right that like if if there isn't a bucket access class that expresses what you want, you have to go to a, to an admin and say please create it. But like that that's that's a better situation than having people do one-off requests in their in their BARs um, that are override things uh, because the, the admin should have veto power over those kinds of things. The admin should say, you know what, you want S3v5, but I don't want you to use it because I have, because reasons, you know? And so I'm gonna forbid it. And you gotta use the bucket access classes I give you. And then you have to live within those right. those options. So I, I don't have a problem I think with the class, putting, the admin can always class. override. Right, so we don't have any problem to override from a class, but the question is, do we want the workloads to specify anything? Well, the, the workloads the wor choose a bucket access class. That's what they do by by specifying which class in their BAR they can get one of multiple yeah. behaviors, and so that that's what I'm getting at with choosing one with. V4 but it's not only. concrete, right? It doesn't mean so. So what I'm saying is, by choosing a bucket access class, I'm not uh, I'm not concise about which version my workload is compiled to support, right? For example. Well, I, but you, you always have this problem with, with, with uh, storage classes. I mean, you know, if, if there's some magic feature that your, that your uh, workload- we'll Take volume mode, of the storage. right? Like volume mode, if I want block versus file, right? If, I, if my workload doesn't, you know, That's doesn't special. consume well, block- volume, then... volume mode is special because it actually affects the, the pod spec. And, and the how you specify your, your pod. But but most other sort of you know subtle features of a of a volume you would just specify in your storage class and then those workloads that care would go look at the storage class um, and 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 choose a storage class that has what they need or if or if not then get an admin to, to create a storage class and, and that's that's not viewed as a problem over on the volume side if if you know you need to go tell an admin to create a new storage class to enable some feature that you care about. That's just what you do. Uh, we, we don't we don't have all kinds of overrides in the PVC to say you know I want to override the storage class with this or pick this special choice. I mean the the the, the specific exceptions are things that affect the API like volume mode, and like uh, access modes. So there's a few things that do show up in in the uh, in the PVC, but those don't show up in the storage class. So it's like the, they made the decision. Some things are storage class, some things are PVC. Nothing is, nothing is both. Uh, and, and this feels like a bucket access class thing. But, um, but yeah, what I was just trying to get to in, in my head is, is there a way to to say that you know I support v, v5 and prefer it, but I would also accept v4 if that's all you've got as a workload. Um, so, so picking a bucket access class that, that says that, and then, and then the, the important thing is when I, when I get my, 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 my pod starts up and I get this, this, uh, access info injected in, can I tell what I'm dealing with? And so I think the answer is yes, right? The, there's exactly one signature version and it's going to be V4 by default. And so I know. And if it if it was v5 or if it was v2 because someone made a different choice, then I would be told that right here. So I'm happy with it. We just need. So, so that tells me. So in, uh, quickly going back to storage class and and uh, uh, what you can specify in the PVC. Um, is, can you specify anything vendor specific in a storage class? Yeah, that's that's what the opaque parameters are for. Opaque parameters, sure, but but but. The, the actual fields, the first class fields. No, class. no, no. The... So it's weird that in, in bucket classes we have that and bucket access class we have that. We have uh, what? That we have as first class fields, uh, protocol specific fields. Well, yeah, we need to fix that. But, but like we need to define this first because this informs how we fix that, I think. Like, like once we know what what we are responsible for delivering to the workloads then we can figure out like what is the right way for the user to tell us what they want or or for the admin to give users a menu of choices that they can pick from fair enough i, I think i think maybe we do the line between bucket access class or bucket class and and what the workload can specify slightly off um yeah yeah i mean i i think we can do better but like i think we, we unless we have a crisp definition of this layer we're going to be 
having a lot of useless arguments at, at, at the higher layer, <laughs> I'm afraid. I mean, I think it's fair to say we'll only support S3v4 and, and leave it up to the... Yeah, this this is this is kind of an internal question. Like, um, what what nego you know what what signature version you use? Um, it's okay to say uh, you know you, you make the assumption that if the driver supports v4, you get v4. Uh, it's it, it's a, it's a it's a contract between the driver and and uh, the actual workload. Um, it's a contract it's between the the driver and the workload. Well, well, it's um, I mean I. Imagine that we didn't have this field, right? Then that's what I'm saying. Then, then what you're going to get is is the the workload is going to have to presume v4. But like, if that fails for whatever reason, is it supposed to try v2? Is it supposed to try v5? Like, or or, or imagine a future where v5 exists, but like most people are still using v4. Like, is it okay for workloads to just attempt v5 and negotiate down to v4 when it doesn't work? You know, if that's if that's the semantic we want, then yeah, we could say you know what it's it's up to you to figure out what flavor of S three you got, um, and we'll we'll just give you, you know, something. But I think this field right here, the the downward API of it, mm -hmm. at least leave leave aside for a second the the class field, uh, but but this field is is um, uh, is the com communication channel between the driver saying this mm -hmm. is what you should be using. Because that's what what I allocated for you, and it doesn't really matter. After we got to this point where I'm telling you use v2, you cannot use v4. It doesn't make sense because I'm asking you use v2, right? And yeah. we we should assume here at least that um, that you know the workloads at least are are capable. Right? I think that that's the current situation. I don't know if it, we can assume it, but that's the current situation yeah. that most workloads are capable of using both. But uh, sometimes servers would like to ask um, like because they they are um, you know like to take for example the AWS regions which used to have v2 before right and they didn't support it yet v4 etc right so these servers would would tell you by documentation go and use v2 with us with these regions right so same way here we're trying to say when you got from me this bucket access you should use this one because that's what i uh, you know this is how i hooked it up together for you this is what i have for you but now the, the the second question is do we need also the you know upward api from the workload back to the to to cozy to say what what should the workload uh, what what is the workload expecting I, I, and yes or no we can say no as well we don't i, I think it, it really it really depends on how hard it is to just figure it out dynamically right if no, it's impossible, like, I think. Is it? Um, I mean, I mean, what I mean is possible. It's always possible to make some heuristic, but I don't. It's not that it's impossible, but I I don't think any workload does that. So right, they kind that, of that, that's over. what I mean. Because uh, they they make assumptions. Certainly not about, impossible. <laughs> yeah, they they make assumptions about what's supported by the back end. Um, I I I think if you want to keep things uh, portable, we'll need to have this. Because uh, you know, let's say you move from something that supports v4 to something that doesn't, and suddenly your workload stops working. That's not okay. It's not portable then, right? Right, but it, but it's it's hard to imagine a future where someone implements an S3 compatible object store that doesn't do S3 v4. I mean, maybe that's because my imagination isn't isn't bright. No, enough. but it could be that it, it doesn't support v5 yet, right? Yeah. And then and then you want that driver to keep on. Uh, well, right, know, but, communicating but, use v4 with me but but I, I guess i'm also having a hard time imagining a world where like v5 doesn't seamlessly negotiate down to v4 just given the massive adoption of s3 v4 you know when s3 v5 turns up there's going to be this huge or if and when i should say it's, it's not it's not a sure thing it will happen but, but if it did if we're looking would, at history it was exactly this right it was just based on documentation it wasn't really any uh, you know uh, negotiation right. I like it can happen like you say but it didn't before so I don't know it yeah. might okay. most are backwards compatible right so and it's up to the administrators or the infrastructure to know what you're using and if you're moving to something else that it's not going to work right oh, so, so these are signature version API so it's it's the, it's the way in which it hashes uh, 
the entire request uh, and sends it as a part of the header. Um, yeah, it's not really backward compatible, unfortunately. But 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 no. what, what I mean what I mean by backward compatible is like you still you're still sending HTTP requests with some some headers twiddled and and you could you could try a, a you know a V2 style and a V4 style and a V5 style as like three yeah. separate requests and 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 you could pick some benign request that just like lists the the, the root object or something and, and then you know, and see which one succeeds and then go with the one that works, the highest one that, that doesn't fail, you know. Does that, does that break the promise of portability across clusters, portability across object storage providers? It, it, it all depends on like what the expectations are of these workloads. And I don't have the history in the object storage industry to know like wh when when there was a move from V2 to V4, was it, did it break everybody? And was it, was it a lot of hassle or was it pretty easy to deal with? And yes, no, 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 that was a lot of hassle. <laughs> Okay. okay. Uh, it created it created a lot of hassle, but is I think then... to to your point, if if this is what you're saying, we could also uh, instead of putting this effort on the workloads and say, yeah, you workloads should auto detect. Let's say the driver will auto detect and then tell the workload. Yeah, just the downward API then. Okay. Then well, the, so, so so then then the question is, is this a is this a single value or is this a list of of, of supported values? Because I'm I'm still confused about you know if the server allows both v4 and v5 and it really doesn't care, how how do you communicate that to the workload that, you know, because some workloads might be only support v4 and they need to know that v4 is still okay while other workloads may support both and prefer v5 and so they need to know that oh you know, I yeah. can use v5. <laughs> so I think this like the downward API should should be like should be decisive. Say this is what you know we've set up for for this workload but if you if you want to have a preferred um you know whatever pre preferences and negotiations that should start from the workload side or the class side like either the request side say these are the list of versions i would be able to use right give me one of the one of those or i'm, I'm just you know. trying to, to play out of my mind the, the scenario where we're, we're halfway through migrating from v4 to v5 what do people generally put in their access classes? What do, what do we supply in the downward API and how do people code their workloads to cope in that world where you you never know what you're gonna get? Um, for, for me, I, I would I would enforce the, the version in the bucket class. Yeah, that sounds like the right way. So for instance- So, so, so you would yeah, say, you, if my workload wants v5 i would just put v5 in there and then allow it and and i would be okay with the fact that it fails on a v4 only back end yeah. and if for some reason because people know what they're doing right so but 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 in that world then then if, if i'm in a world where i don't know what the server supports and and i just want i just want a bucket that works i'm always going to stick with v4 then because i mean i know that's the only thing that, that i can rely on to yeah. to successfully create a bucket and and then no one will ever move to v5 no, but you, that's what happened with V2. Actually, that, that was what <laughs> that, that, what that, kept V2 such that, sticky, that, right? That, that's why returning a list of supported versions seems more sensible to me because then you can say, look, you know, you can do V4, but you can also do V5, and it's up to you. Um, you yeah, know, but it, why not creating two access classes then? Well, but be, because when I create my bucket request, I have to pick one of them, and and there needs I, I would want you'd want there to be a way to express the, that I I don't care. That, that I I can take v4 but I prefer v5 and so give me the best you've got uh, if if you can only specify one then people are always going to choose the v4 one because to choose the v5 one might might fail whereas to choose the v4 one will never fail <clears throat> um, and, and it would be better to have a way to say prefer v5 but accept v4 and then have the server be able to say you know what i can only do v4 so don't try v5 with me and have what another happens? server say oh okay i, I can do both and so so we can one make a class that represents what you just said right a class right, right, that but, represents give me v5 if, if possible otherwise give me v4 but then the 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 downward API would have to reflect that same information, right? Because no, no, I, no, I think the downward say, API downward API is, is just care. you know the service tells you. No, no. Right, so I, I what understand. If, you say you say the workload good. doesn't care. Uh, uh, I see. I see. So you're saying downward API will only have one value, but then the workload can request one of many. Right, and if the server actually supports both, how does it communicate that to the, you know, if if the client so you, said I I, oh, I I will deal with both. 
then you need a way to say, okay, I, I support V5 and V4, not knowing what, uh, what the workload is actually. Why not contains. tell it? Why not tell it? This is what you got, right? This is. Uh... Right. I mean, the client can support uh, also um, other features that um, um, on top of what we have here, right? But you know, we need to tell it what to use from like, f from from the class that we use here. So if the class represents, you know, I prefer V five, but give me V four if you don't have it, and then the driver takes this as a as a you know request for V five if possible and answers, okay, here you go, a V five. Access I, I, or I feel like we either need a, a a list of versions here, or we need like a minimum or maximum version with with you know some. But why do why do you think the server should represent um, a, a choice, a menu to the to the workload at this be, be, downward API? Why, why not it, give it one after I told you what it can use? Yeah, but because because if if, if I have to give you. If you can support both four and five, should it give you five or should it give you four? It should give you both because because the, yeah. the 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 because the why admin, well, why do you need it to give you both at this point? Because because you need you already to, know, to know the that, client can use it, right? But you don't know if the server can 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 only give you v four. If the server doesn't, if if the server cannot give you something, then the driver should give you the other, right? In your downward API, I tell you use the other one because otherwise, you know, I can't. Right, right. But, but if the server can in. support both, therefore a yeah. workload that only supports v4 would work and a workload that prefers v5 could also work. How do you communicate that fact to the end user or to the individual pod, right? Because the, the user didn't care. He, he picked, you know, either one. And right. so the server had to put it on something. And then the workload is is a third variable, which may or may not support both. And if it and you and the, you you know you, you need to know if if uh if, if it's only v5, or, I mean sorry if it's only v4, don't try v5, because you said in your request I will take something that only does v4, as well as something that takes v5. So it feels like a list to me. <laughs> um, but but we're getting pretty deep in in this one specific parameter and not making yeah. progress. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know how to how to wrap this up, um, but but I, I think we need to put a a pin in it to say that. I think I think in cases we like we don't know exactly what to do with these with these uh, signature versions. I think I think I think the simplest answer is not to even have this field. Right, right. I mean that that still feels like a valid answer is to say we're not going to tell you what the version is, and it's up to you to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I but I understand that like that will cause some complexity for people that are stuck in a world with only S three v two. Is it really that different than different than sorry uh, <laughs> different than the the fact that I'm choosing S three versus uh, Azure, for example? Like the workload from from the workload perspective, I can have a workload that supports both. Right, technically right. speaking, right. I, I can write it, but do, do I like do, do I even care about but, these well, things? But yeah. but, but you're you're guaranteed when you get this bucket access info that only one of the of the sh of the members will be populated. So like if, if you're the guy parsing the file that we inject, right. you you know what to what keys to look for, and then if it's S three, you know what sub keys to look for. Um, no, I mean, but I, I don't. I don't expect. So I, I agree, but I mean, I don't expect Cozy to provide me both, right? A, a bucket access that represents use either, choose one, right? So why in this case are you following some pattern where you know you want to give the workload yeah. uh, no, I, uh, like a yeah? It, it's it's because it's specifically because we anticipate that what well, we know that there are servers that support both. V2 and V4 at the same time. Um, and we anticipate that if there's ever a V5, that everything that supports V5 will also support V4 for at least a little while, um, you know, during some migration process. And so to cope with these situations where like the very same bucket can support more than one protocol and someone has to make a call about which one to use, you got to do something. Like I, I, I don't see similar situations where like, a bucket supports both the S3 protocol and the GCS protocol. 
being particular. I mean, I, I know, yeah, I, I know that it, systems that do that. Like, actually, no, I, I, I was about to say, like, I know that it exists, but like, that's not going to be a normal way someone works where they're going to say, like, you know what? I don't care if you give me S3 or GCS. They're going to, they're going to say, I want a GCS bucket or I want an S3 bucket, and you're going to, and it may be that the same backend can do both, but but it'll like it won't tell you it won't tell you that the bucket you got is actually supported by both. It'll just tell you how to deal with it with the protocol of your choice. So from that perspective, I would say, I mean, I think it's pretty simple and we should just keep it simple and say, you know, tell me one, tell me what do you support? And this, the you know, Cozy will tell you back, okay, you got it. And that's it. I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Like if it doesn't match, like, like other cases where- Or don't even specify it. I, I'd say don't specify it. it right. it's, it's a standard, right? As AWS changes the version, so they expect everyone else who is doing S3 to change their version as well. Right. So if you're in, right, doing applications, you're going to have to keep up with the times. Yeah. It should be irrelevant. I agree. But how do you, but how do you switch? I mean, how does the switch happens? I mean, the fact that AWS, you know, at some day published an article say, here's V5. It breaks. What happens? Yeah, so but then they also say V4 <laughs> is going to end as of this date. Right. We're no longer going to support V4 after this date. And everyone else, all of the other vendors that are doing S3 are going to follow suit. Everybody keeps up yeah, with right. AWS. Right. So if your application doesn't keep up, it breaks. And that's just the way it works. No, no, but I mean, at this, like at, at that time, right? When both versions are still valid in the standard um, and, and some workloads are, you know, we're not, we're not rebuilt to support it. As long as both our versions are supported, both will continue to work until the older one, it drops support. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that in this case, we need to synchronize somehow the workloads and the servers. Yeah, the admin will have to do that. Yeah. And Cozy will be out of this path saying, yeah. I, I don't specify what's the synchronization. You'll, you'll deal with this. Right. Yes. Yeah, and I guess, it, so in, in that so Why world, not specify? <laughs> well, I, mean, no, no, that's, I if, think it yeah. adds more. So the whole point of specifying is it's so that, that, that you know, we, we're perceiving or we're thinking that by specifying, we're going to make the life easier for, for uh, the applications to stay uh, uh, compatible with the object storage provider. But it seems to add more complex. No, 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 no. We won't make it compatible. We will make it deterministically, uh, you know, fail if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't if the synchronization didn't ha didn't occur right but, but it seems to be adding more complexity than making life easier it, yeah it, that, that's my worry is that in order to get this right we would need a we would need a list i think to get it really right and it's hard to understand what's going on because the list would have to appear in in the bucket class or the bucket access class and the bucket access object and the downward api right. and it's like you have the, all these different fields Semantics. that and and you have to explain it to someone, and and all and the only problem you solved at the end of the day is, is you save someone having to do some probing or negotiation. I, the, 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 so the I, don't, I don't go there, but but what about a single one? Why not a single? Oh, one? Hold on. So so the 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 the, the thought that popped into my mind is if, if this is a problem in practice for somebody, like like let's imagine we leave the field out, and then. And, and we, we reach beta or we reach GA or whatever. And, and then the next week, Amazon announces V5 support and V4 is deprecated in a year. And so over the course of the next year, like everything's going to be moving over. Um, what you could do is, is uh, you know, for the, for the workloads that you know haven't been recompiled for V5 yet, you could use opaque parameters in your bucket access class to say, you know what? This application needs the old protocol because I haven't recompiled it yet, and just treat it as an opaque thing. The driver could say, "Okay, you know, only give them a bucket that supports V4," um, and then and but but it would be a temporary situation, right? Because after the end of a year, you'd know that V4 was 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 dead anyways, and and if the applications hadn't been recompiled by that point, they're they're just doomed. So so it, it's still a solvable problem using opaque params. Um, if for those applications that really care, I think. I don't know. It's uh, only, see. then you're going to have to start translating. I see, I see. Right? I, I, to, just to, I think I agree, but because I just understood like what you said that 
basically what you're saying is that we don't need the field and the reason why we don't need it is that the only usage of it at this point is to go back to a, like the previous version tell the workload use a previous version and uh you're saying for that you know you just the, the admin will just restrict the the bucket access class or the, restrict yeah. the class to do that and that's it and it will be assumed cool. by the, 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 that, that's that's so, my yeah. thinking is, the is, workload's going to the workload's going to use whatever version it's going to use the object store is going to accept whatever version it's going to accept. They're either going to work or they're not going to work. We don't need to get in the middle of that. Well, the, the workloads can, in principle, negotiate down. They can try v5, and if it fails, try v4. And if that fails, they could even try v2, right? And, and that that would be up to the workload to yeah. sort of negotiate its way down. But you're, but but as but long as as long as that's possible, yeah, we, we can stay out of the way, um, and just let let things work and and for the vast majority of things it'll probably be v4 only and they won't try negotiating and you won't have any problems right right so the only time this would be a problem is if a workload up was up to date before the object store where the workload was ready for v5 but the object stores available were not and the workload didn't know how to negotiate down to v4 right, right. but but that seems unlikely to me because yeah. there will be yeah. this transitional period I, where you you have to support both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can actually see that situation happening, but but I think in that situation, <laughs> yeah, it, exactly what happened actually would yeah, be too. <laughs> but but again, it shouldn't be. It's not for a problem for us to solve. Right, right. That's what we say. we just pass through. We don't need to solve this problem for them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm inclined to to leave the signature version out yeah. based on this discussion. Uh huh. Um, I, I I like that actually. Yeah, that's better, cleaner. Looks better already. Okay, so 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 the certificate one I think is a can of worms, and we only have six minutes to open this can of worms. Okay, um, <laughs> I, I, the, okay so I made it a map string byte because uh, um, just the file name for the certificate and and actually no, okay, it's a can of worms. You can just say based on the previous discussion, certificates shouldn't shouldn't be there as well. But that's it. Well, is that what we decided? I'm good with that. I mean, previous, I mean, like the, the signature oh, version is right, right. You know, just assume yeah. it's the same, right? It should work. And if it doesn't, we're... No, no, what, what it means in practice is that like, if you're, if you're in a private, private cloud situation or in your object storage is, is like using some self-signed certificate that it will be incumbent on the, the guy pressing the images to embed the appropriate certs in his images so that his workloads can trust the S3 server that they're talking to, right? That, 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 that's oh, you can the... mount it. You, you can also mount it. You, I mean, there's plenty of ways where you can uh, inject um, CA certificates to a pod. Oh, right, right. Or right. should there be an ignore certificate flag? Right. Oh, like a, mi a minus K flag? Yeah. <laughs> make, make I mean, it, the way you do it anywhere else, right? If this no, like a dash dash CA cert, right? Uh, yeah. Where to look locate, right? Or or ignore. Yeah, ignore. Both. <laughs> yeah. Both will affect the same if what you're trying <laughs> okay. to do. Is, uh, then, yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the minus K flag is, is really dangerous, so people shouldn't use it. But, uh, and it's right, but if it's a test environment or, or something... Right, but, 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 but this was originally no don't put insecure as a field in here man <laughs> no, we, we said that your url will be http right yeah, in that yeah, case yeah. Is, well yeah, yeah the, the, no. there's always that option is the url can be http but but no but the the the, credit, the certificates were originally proposed because we know that there will be like private you know private kubernetes clusters with self-signed certs running everywhere and mm -hmm. you want your workloads to be able to trust your object storage, which which means that the CA does need to get in there somehow. And, and that, that's how the idea came up. But yeah, I like the idea of saying, you know what, there are other ways to do that in Kubernetes. Yeah. Um, and we don't want to make it Cozy's job to be schlepping certificates around. You know, you just have to figure that out out of band. Um, or, or, or use removes, HTTP if, if you can't figure it out. It removes portability. Because all of a sudden you have to you have to um, create a config map or a secret in which you then have the the CA cert and you have to change your pod spec to actually mount that at a particular location. So you can't take the same pod spec and move it across clusters. Yeah, but you have the same problem with anything that, that talks HTTPS to a 
to a, a server that uses self-signed certs, right? I any I, any I I know and I agree, but if Cozy's intent is to be to make things portable, then from my point of view, this is part of it. I mean, we're relying on a lot of different things uh, in order to be portable, right? Like like even the uh, IP addresses. Uh, 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 I mean the whole CNI infrastructure that you're relying on. Uh, if 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 that didn't do its job, it wouldn't be portable either. Um, I I don't I don't think we need to worry about that, Be because certificates are are not something that. I mean, it's required to talk to an object storage provider, but it's not really an authentication mechanism, primarily used in object storage. It's a it's a mechanism to make sure you you encrypt data at, uh, in 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 uh, data in you know, on, in the wire. In motion. In motion. Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, I, there's so many other situations where, you know, if you're running in a private cloud, you're going to need to be slipstreaming certs into your images or, you know, shoving them in through config maps or, or some other mechanism that... You might already to, have a different mechanism. So, you know... Having, you, having to do it for Cozy... I don't see how that really reduces workload portability. Mm -hmm. um, you mean having not to do it for Cozy? So you, you mean co when Cozy doesn't do it, it doesn't... Right. Ha having having to do it yourself right, when right. using Cozy, right? I, it doesn't seem like a showstopper to me. Um, yeah. I because I, because so so on the the flip side is my worry is if we do just give you a bundle of certs like it's get. It's going to be very hard for some some applications to figure out what to do with those, because a lot of things, you know, either use the built-in CA store of the operating system that they're running in, and right. so if there's extra certs, like you have work to do to take those and shove them in to that CA store, like it, it it's going to create more problems in some cases than it solves, and and people people know how to solve those problems on their end, um, like yeah. Yeah, we shouldn't be getting into that life cycle. It, yeah, if, if you're talking to HTTPS services that are that aren't signed by one of the the many, you know, worldwide CAs, you just you have to inject your CAs in there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I guess another way to look at it is let's say we leave it out and then later we decide to add it in. Is that going to be a worse situation than putting it in and then later decide to to take it out? Definitely. Um, no. I, I'd rather well, start they're, from they're, a position they're... of, I'd rather start from a position yeah. of leaving it out and having it be more simple. And then if someone comes to us with a, you know, with a sob story of why it's so hard to 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 get this right, and they, they convince us that we really need it, then we can say, okay, you know, in beta or alpha two, we're going to add certificate support to this thing. <clears throat> right, but then a, just a, a, a the unlike... pods need to support not having it right as a backward compatible Jeez. option. <laughs> 